All right, so today we're going to carry out the reaction types lab. If you haven't yet watched the pre-lab, um, be sure to do that. It explains the data that you're to be collecting as you do the lab. Um, it also explains the outcome of the lab relative to writing up balanced equations, and it also reviews the idea of gathering information about the phases that the reactants and products exist in. Um, so if you haven't yet watched that introductory video, uh, please do so now. You don't want to go forward into this without having done so. So what we're going to do today is we're going to carry out the uh, six parts of this lab. Each part, as you know, is its own unique um, its own unique little mini um, mini lab. Um, we're just going to do them one at a time. Um, realize that you will then be gathering data and writing balanced equations, but understand that I am not going to explain to you what data to collect. It will be up to you to watch carefully, hit pause if you need, and gather the information that you need. Um, of course, you should have a copy of the lab in front of you. If you haven't printed that yet, make sure you do so. So the first thing that we're going to do is we are going to take a piece of copper wire, which has already been sanded, and we are going to use a set of crucible tongs, and we are going to place this wire in the Bunsen burner flame, and we're gonna leave it there for 90 seconds. So let's get our Bunsen burner lit, like so. So first of all, you wanna make some observations before you get started. And now we're gonna stick this guy in the burner flame. There we go. Approximately 90 seconds. Oh, we're getting a little flame test. Oh, it's melting. Get a little flame test color there. I hope you guys can see that green. You can see the green flame. That's cool. Oh, and it's dripping down the burner. We're going to stop there. <laughs> All right. Okay, that's our. So you'll notice it's changed pretty significantly. There it is. And that looks great. All right. So I'm going to set this on here so it doesn't hurt anybody. And um, that was uh, part one. Again, make sure that you're recording uh, observations before and after the reaction. Now for part two, we're going to take a five centimeter piece of magnesium ribbon, get that straight, which looks like so. And we're gonna take this dude. Oh, and drop it on the floor. <laughs> and we're gonna take this guy and stick it in the Bunsen burner. Let the reaction get started. Well, that's gonna fry your phone. I know. That's pretty great. Uh-huh, that's a good one. All right, notice we're doing this over the tabletop and not the floor, because if it falls, it'll melt the floor. Won't wow, melt the tabletop. That looks great. And now I'm blind. <laughs> and there's our product. Holy smokes, I seriously can't even read anymore. <laughs> okay, so we do need our Bunsen burner for the third part of this, but I'm going to shut it off as we get set up. Um, moving now on to part three, we are going to take some copper two carbonate. Let me tap this down like so. So copper two carbonate. I don't know if you can see this, but it is actually a, a fine green powder. Does that come across? Yeah, you can see that it's a, the green powder, but to know that it's nice and fine is... Okay. And we're going to take that and we're going to place this in a test tube holder, test tube clamp. And we're going to get that out of the way and we'll tilt this ever so slightly. And we are going to stick that in a Bunsen burner flame. For how long? Like 60 seconds? Uh, I thought we said three minutes. Oh, three minutes. All right. So stick that down in the burner flame. And let that go for about three minutes. Oh, poke it, poke it. Got it. <laughs> nice save. All 
All right, as that reaction continues, we will then get ready with a wood splint. Ooh, that guy. It's going really well. Yeah, I think we're probably good to test this now. I think so too. And what we're going to do then is we're gonna take a wood splint, light it on fire, and then introduce the splint into the test tube. Doing that again and introduce that into the test tube. And we'll do it one more time. And burning, and like so. And there we have it. All right, we are making a horrible mess. <laughs> and we are now done with part three. We'll do all the cleanup later okay. as we have time. Okay, so we're now done with part three of the lab. Um, now we're moving on to part four. Again, if you need to pause the video so that you can catch up in terms of your observations, feel free to do that. Okay, so starting now in part four, and actually we can just keep this burner going. Starting then in part four, what we're going to do is we are going to take um, some six molar hydrochloric acid. It's a clear colorless solution. And we're going to introduce into that some small pieces of zinc metal. So we're gonna do that. Can I take a look at the zinc real quick? Oh yeah, yeah, thank you. Like so. Good? Good. Okay, then we're going to carefully introduce this to here. Perfect. Is that okay? Yep. All right. So we're going to put that here, and then we are going to introduce another test tube over the top and capture the gas that is being produced by those bubbles. And then we are going to introduce another burning wood splint into this. I think we're good. All right, here we go. On fire and... Ooh, that worked really well. Like so. <laughs> Let's do that again, shall we? <laughs> and one more time just for fun. Like so. All right. I think that was a positive <laughs> test result. And now we can shut this off. Okay. So that took us through the end of part four. Again, guys, pause if you need in order to record results. Now on to some less dramatic reactions. Um, in part five, what we're going to do is we are going to take some one molar copper two sulfate, a clear blue solution, and to this, we are actually going to add one piece of zinc. I'm going to try to get one that's relatively large. So we're going to carefully drop in a piece of zinc, like so. And then we're going to let this sit. So that's going to go away. And as that goes away, we're now ready to go on to part six. And what we're going to do here is we're going to take some uh, 0.1 molar zinc acetate, and some 0.1 molar sodium phosphate, both clear colorless solutions. And let me see if I can do this in such a way that, what can I do to, so you can see. I wonder if I kind of stand like, in front like of you. Like this, is that okay? That's perfect. All right, and we're gonna mix those guys together. Oh, that came through really clearly. Chunks. <laughs> All right, so now you can see that this is neither clear nor colorless anymore. Mm -hmm. um, does that come across that you can see the chunks in there? Yeah, you can see that's really chunky. Beautiful. Thick. All right. So now we're all done with part six, which then brings us back to part five. This one might be a little harder to see. Can you make that? You can that... see. What about that? If we put it up against, is that any help? No. Yeah. You can kind of see know. the color change. Okay. So the thing that we need you to be seeing is that the zinc no longer looks like the zinc did initially. 
and perhaps it's hard to see on the video, but the zinc now has an interesting um, rusty, reddish, almost copper color to it, mm -hmm. um, which is quite a solid hint in terms of what's going on to <laughs> that piece of zinc. Wow. All right, have we done it? We've done it. Wonderful. Okay, so as you need, feel free to go back and rewind and rewatch the video as you're gathering your data. And then remember the idea is that on this page, you're going to write the balanced equation for each one of these reactions. Don't forget to include the reaction type, and then don't forget to include subscripts. And then to finish this all up, you've got some conclusion questions to answer, and you're all done.